Marriage. It's a nice thought. But let's talk about marriage. Before I get into the meat of the matter, let me start off with a couple of things. I'm not against marriage as a whole. I have been married, and I was the one who initiated the divorce when it was time for that to happen. My ex-wife did not take me to the cleaners in the divorce. If anything, I came out of it in a pretty good position. I wasn't set back financially for decades because of the divorce. We did not have children. Now that I've put those things out there, let us continue. I've seen a lot of guys, especially young guys, on Twitter in the very recent past talking about wanting to get married. All I can think when I see their talks, yearnings, and longings is... Why? Why would you want to get married? Why would you want to get married in today's day and age? Do you not understand that when you get a state-sanctioned license to get married, you are not only married to the person that you wanted to get married to, but you are also now married to the state? Ask me how I know. You may be the breadwinner. You may be the head of the household. You may be the man in charge. You may be the patriarch. You may be whatever you think you are until you are not. In today's world of no-fault divorce, either party can end the marriage for any reason or for no reason whatsoever. When that happens, you are done. I don't care that you think you're the breadwinner, the man, the patriarch, or whatever you think you are. You are none of those things if and when she decides to end the marriage. And then enter the state. The true patriarch of the household in the West is also the one true God, and that is the state. We as a society have deemed this so, which also means that the state is the one that we have allowed to use force to enforce agreements, contracts, and disputes. You either file or she files for divorce, the state now gets involved, especially if you have children. Even if you don't get married, but you have children together, and one or both of you decide to split up, the state gets involved on behalf of your children. Any religion that is part of the West bends the knee to the state. I don't care what flavor it is. If a particular denomination of a particular flavor of faith tries to intervene in a legal proceeding, which a divorce is, that church, ward, denomination, etc. can lose their tax-exempt status because it was the state that granted them that status to begin with. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. No religion, at least in the West, is going to jeopardize that. So, religion isn't going to save your marriage. Many years ago, there was a stigma for having children out of wedlock. The children were referred to as bastards. That stigma is all but gone in today's modern world. Marriage used to mean that a man had some type of authority, at least in his own home. Today, men have no authority, only responsibility. 
And so, again, I ask, why would you want to get married? If women are the gatekeepers to sex and men are the gatekeepers to commitment, why do you, and I'm assuming that you're a man watching this, why would you want to rush into commitment and potentially ruin yourselves financially, emotionally, mentally, etc., when you can have everything that a marriage offers without actually having to get married? Why do you want to give up the only real authority and agency that you have? You want to live together? You can do that without getting married. You want to offer insurance and other types of benefits to her? You can do that now without getting married. You want to have children. You can do that without getting married. The only thing that you can't have without a marriage is a divorce. The only positive that I can think of that you can only get from being married is certain tax breaks. And even those don't add up to a lot. Not in the long run, at least. Ask me how I know. When I got married, the marriage license cost me $50. We had a simple ceremony in my house where we only invited close family and friends. I don't remember exactly what I paid for the Justice of the Peace to come out and preside over the ceremony, but honestly, it wasn't more than a hundred bucks at most. So I'm looking at hundred, hundred and fifty dollars total for the license and the ceremony to make it quote unquote official. When I filed for divorce, the filing alone cost me almost $400 just to file. Getting married is cheap and easy. Getting divorced takes time and is expensive. Getting married, all I had to do was have someone have her come with me down to the justice of the peace, down to the courthouse made a petition, paid the fee, had people sign off on it, basically consenting that we wanted to get married. And for all purposes at that point, we were married. Getting divorced, like I said, was almost 400 bucks. And there was a mandatory minimum cool down period of 90 days before the divorce was finalized. And if you have children, you have to have that taken care of before they have special courses and stuff that you are mandatorily having to take. You have to take them before you can get divorced. And those can take anywhere from several weeks to several months or even longer depending on if one party or the other drags their feet. And then if you have disputes over property, which all a divorce, that's all a divorce is today with no fault divorce. It's not that the court is going to say, sorry, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. Smith, you cannot get divorced or sorry, Mrs. Smith, you cannot get divorced. No. With no fault, you're going to get divorced. They're not going to make you stay together. But all divorce is, is fighting over property, over goods. That's all it is. And some people take years because one party or the other is dragging the other one back into court over petty grievances. Because ultimately, 
that's what it comes down to, is petty grievances. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not against the institution of marriage itself, but I am against it in its current incarnation. You want to make marriage great again? You need to start at the state level and with the laws. If men are expected to be the providers of food, a house, safety, and security, what are the women supposed to bring to the table? Let's make whatever that is legally enforceable. I was 37 years old when I got married. I have no regrets about my marriage and I certainly have no regrets about my divorce. I was also in no hurry to get married. Young men, especially ones in their 20s, you need to slow down and take your time to figure out who you are and what you want out of life before considering getting married, especially in today's day and age. The risks are too high in many cases and the cost usually isn't worth the price that you could end up paying. You want to have an LTR? Fine, do that. You want to live together? Okay, maybe not your best option, but hey, go for it. But get married? I would have to say, don't do it. Not unless you don't have a problem with getting into bed with the state. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the like button. It sends tingles to YouTube's vagina, which further boosts the signal and gets this further out there. Hit the notification bell so that hopefully YouTube will let you know what I'm up to next. Comment on this video with anything you want to share or add. I, I love interacting with you guys. And share this with someone that you think would benefit from it. I'll see you all again next time.